Etihad Airways, the United Airlines of the UAE. Literally, because Etihad is the Arabic word for union, therefore technically the same meaning as united. Back in the 2010s, Etihad got a lot of attention for their bold and innovative concepts and designs, from their two-faced business class to the enormous first-class suites aboard their Airbus A380 to the legendary residents, the airline didn't spare a dime to set themselves apart from the competition. But Etihad's wallet didn't just sit loose for their own onboard product, they also made generous investments in desolate carriers such as Air Berlin and Alitalia. Spending billions of dollars on things that never yielded a significant return, Etihad entered a spiral of decline in the late 2010s, culminating in even cutting full meal services in economy class on 16-hour long-haul flights, which we showed in a trip report on a Los Angeles to Abu Dhabi flight in February of 2019. Etihad Airways subsequently shrank itself to a healthier size, removing all A330s, A340s, 777-200LRs and A380s from their fleet, although the latter just returned for a limited time on their London route. A new video about Etihad's A380 is in the works, so make sure you are subscribed to our channel so you won't miss this or any of our countless other upcoming videos. After reorganizing itself, Etihad is once again looking at a brighter future, with Abu Dhabi's much-delayed midfield concourse finally expected to open later this year. The airline also introduced a new aircraft type to its fleet for the first time in years, the Airbus A350-1000. While the interior's design impresses just as much as previous cabins, Etihad opted for more off-the-shelf kind of seats than they did in the past. A decision which doesn't set it apart as much as their cabins did in the past, but one their bottom line will thank them for. So today, let me take you along on a flight of Simply Aviation co-founder Felix, who took Etihad's Airbus A350-1000 on a ride from Mumbai to Abu Dhabi in economy class and show you what's old, what's new and what's to know. Aviation geeks and frequent flyers, welcome to this new episode of our flight review series Brutally Honest. Felix just arrived from Delhi aboard Indian low-cost carrier Go First, a flight which we recently showcased in a trip report on our channel as well. We're at Terminal 1 of Mumbai's Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj International Airport right now, about to take the free shuttle bus over to the main international terminal. Mumbai has two terminals, the old Terminal 1 and the more modern Terminal 2. They are colloquially known by the names of the neighborhoods they're located in as Santa Cruz and Sahar. Unfortunately, CSMIA, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj International Airport as it is often abbreviated, is not yet connected to Mumbai's extensive rail network. Metroline 3 is currently under construction and is expected to commence operation to the airport later this year. A connection to Metroline 7 is also planned and so is a Line 8 which is supposed to connect Chhatrapati Shivaji Airport to Navi Mumbai Airport, the new airport which is currently under construction as well. We just arrived here at Terminal 2 which I personally think is an architectural marvel. The terminal was opened in 2014 and was designed by accomplished architectural design firm Skidmore Owings & Merrill. The firm is also responsible for the designs of buildings such as the Hajj Terminal at Jeddah King Abdul Aziz International Airport in the early 80s, San Francisco's iconic International Terminal which opened in 2000, and more recently the new main terminal at Kansas City International Airport and the new stunning Terminal 2 at Bangalore Campagoda International Airport. Their most notable work isn't an airport terminal though, it's the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Check-in and security were quick and easy, despite the masses of people around, even though it's the middle of the night. You see, many airports outside of Europe and North America don't actually close at night, and India is particularly ruthless in this regard, going as far as to offer countless short-haul flights at any time during the night. Our flight departs at the ungodly hour of 4.35 in the morning, meaning you'll have to be at the airport by like 2 a.m. Our ride to Abu Dhabi has just arrived. Tonight, or rather today, we will fly aboard A6XWE, a 2020 built Airbus A350-1000, one of five in Etihad's fleet, with 15 more on order. 
The A350's name is sometimes accompanied by the abbreviation XWB, meaning extra wide body. And while it's a little meaningless detail, I love how Etihad registered their A350s with A6XW registrations as an homage to the XWB by name. There is even one A350 currently in operation which carries the exact registration A6XWB. This is the one starring the UAE's 50th anniversary colors, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the formation of the United Arab Emirates in 1971. As of September 2023, Etihad's five A350s can be found on their routes from Abu Dhabi to New York JFK, Chicago O'Hare, Mumbai, Delhi, as well as on selected flights to Paris and Dublin. Entering the plane through door 2 means we don't get to see the business class cabin consisting of 44 Collins Aerospace Super Diamond seats. These are the same seats that can be found on carriers such as American Airlines, British Airways and China Airlines, although Etihad employed a much more memorable design. The lamps, for example, are supposed to cast thin shadows resembling those of desert palm trees. Back in economy class, Etihad has installed 327 Recaro CL3710 seats in a 333 configuration, with the first five rows offering extra legroom for an additional fee. Airbus has recently upgraded its standard cabin design and through tweaks here and there was able to make the cabin slightly wider and longer. According to Airbus, this makes comfortable 10-seat breast configurations possible aboard the A350. We actually flew on one of those A350s called the New Production Standard just recently on Iberia, which opted to stick with a 9-seat Perot layout and instead make the seats wider. This review is available on our channel already as well, so make sure to check it out too. Why I'm mentioning this is because Etihad is somewhat unique to their approach to seat width. Although they don't publicly share the exact data anywhere, the Runway Girl Network, one of the leading news sites for aircraft cabins and entertainment systems, shared in an October 2022 article that Etihad Airways has the same seat width across their fleet regardless of whether the aircraft type would potentially allow more. With the A350's cabin being particularly wide, especially with the recent increase thanks to the new production standard, rumors are swirling around that Etihad might actually try 10 seats per row layouts on some or all of their remaining 15 A350s on order. The first impression of Etihad's A350 economy class is phenomenal, but let's take a look at it in detail. Waiting on each seat already were a pillow and a blanket, which I find especially thoughtful since this is only a two and a half hour flight. Etihad opted for bifold tray tables, and with a height of 183 centimeters, the legroom looks good too. Inside the standard seat back pocket, there's also a sanitary kit and a pair of headphones. Beneath the entertainment screen, you'll find the audio port, a USB-C port, and a standard USB-A port. Headrests are also installed, which are adjustable vertically as well as on one side, with the other being fixed. This is a design unique to Etihad and is supposed to offer more comfort and a slightly enhanced feeling of privacy. Beneath the seats you may also find universal power outlets as well as a tablet holder up here, both of which Felix glanced over and forgot to show being tired and exhausted from not having slept at all that night. Unfortunately lacking from the cabin are personal air vents. The new screens are enormous and even offer Bluetooth pairings where you can use your own headphones. Etihad's eBox entertainment system runs on a new version of Panasonic's X hardware. Etihad offers a wide variety of movies and TV shows to stream on demand and also provides an audio library and some games. Other features include a parent lock with kids mode even coming with a dedicated in-flight map which was designed in cooperation with Warner Brothers World Abu Dhabi as well as the possibility to share video and thus sync up what you are watching with your partner. Panasonic's new in-flight mapping application Arc is installed as well. Now it's time to depart into the darkness of the Arabian Sea.
Hat's A350s feature very stylish modern lavatories. The entertainment system also offers information regarding the direction to Mecca, as well as the time until the next prayer. Etihad is actually one of just two major airlines in the world, which offer dedicated praying areas on some of their planes. Etihad has curtains installed near doors 2 and 4, with a screen showing the direction to Mecca, prayer mats are also available to those who didn't bring their own. The only other airline which has dedicated prayer areas like this is Saudi Arabian Airlines, which aboard some 777s even has these huge rooms in the rear of the cabin, where usually three additional rows of seats would be. We showcased this in our Brutally Honest episode about Saudia's Boeing 777-300ER on a trip from Jeddah to New York City last year. Check that video out as well if you're interested. Right after takeoff, the crew started a hot breakfast service. Felix pre-ordered the vegan meal, which included congee with vegetables for the main course. This was accompanied by a cold whole grain bread roll, as well as a cup of fruit. A pack of margarine and a granola bar were provided too, just like a bottle of water and a beverage of your choice. I highly appreciate a complimentary hot meal service being provided on such a short flight. Etihad's Airbus A350s are also equipped with Panasonic's KA band Wi Fi, starting at 2 US dollars for 20 megabytes of data for messaging apps, up to 30 US dollars for a 300 megabyte plan. After a brief nap, the sun is rising as we're starting our descent into Abu Dhabi. Even though this flight is comparably short, it was sufficient to grasp the lengths to which Etihad went in putting together this cabin. Features over features, there is virtually nothing left to be desired on this plane. With Etihad's network once again growing and the opening of the new midfield terminal in Abu Dhabi finally in sight, Etihad is well positioned to finally, permanently, establish itself as one of the prime Middle Eastern carriers. It remains to be seen whether the new management will stick to working towards stabilizing the carrier's profits, for example by introducing 10 seat per row layouts on their upcoming A350s, or whether they will keep customer comfort in the foreground. With that, welcome to Abu Dhabi International Airport, and I hope you've enjoyed this video, another one of our no-nonsense reviews in which we try to pack as much useful information as possible instead of just complaining about everything for the sake of views. If you like watching this type of content, please consider supporting our work by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. We have plenty more reviews coming up, including of Indian carrier Vistara, which I'm excited to share with you soon. And if you really believe in our mission to provide no-nonsense first-hand reviews of as many airlines as possible, please consider supporting our work financially by becoming a channel sponsor right here on YouTube. All of these amazing people have done that already, and thanks to them we are able to pay for seat reservations for the best wing views, as well as to further expand the number of airlines showcased on our channel. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for joining us today, and I will see you again for a new video next week.